Oh my goodness. Howdy folks, I'm Black Dragon and welcome to another edition of Black Dragon Biker TV. This is uh this of course <coughs> is uh Bible study Sunday where we study out of one of the books I've written. Tonight will be from Prospects Bible, and um, not Prospects Bible, my new book, President's Bible, and um, just want to thank you all for tuning in from wherever it is in the world you happen to be. So the first thing I always like to check is the sound, and uh, let me uh, see if how the sound is looking. Let me try to pull this up. Sometimes we have problems with the sound. So let me check that out real quick. And um, once we're able to check out the sound, I can move forward. I think we have this up. And um, uh, we do this live, so every now and then uh, we have a few issues. Okay. All right, good. The sound is good then. Out outstanding. All right, I just needed to pull this up on the various channels. What's up, everyone? Good evening. Welcome to Black Dragon Biker TV, our... Um, Sunday night study, uh, Bible study, as it were, and the Bibles are one of the many Bibles that I've written. This uh, study tonight will be from um, uh, the President's Bible, which I have been working on so feverishly, and I have now finally finished the um, the um, um, major writing on the book. So where I am now is I'm actually um, in the editorial. Uh, all the major writing has been done. And so I will be breaking out. Uh, I guess you guys are like the first to, to hear anything that came. Uh, you guys are going to be the first to hear something from the President's Bible. And tonight is going to be talking about knowledge. And I, I've, I've run into a few things here recently where I've been meeting a lot of new presidents. That I, I get calls from presidents all the time. If you ever need to call me to discuss something, uh, my chat line, uh, you can call and we can talk about motorcycle club issues. And I can help you get this knowledge that sometimes some of you guys need. Uh, and it's called you just type in clarity.fm forward slash black hyphen dragon. And uh, that's how you'll get to that. Um, so um, we are looking at um, this idea that you can't know uh, what you don't know. There's no way to know what you don't know. So how, how can you get the knowledge uh, that you need to have uh, as a president of a motorcycle club if you can't know what you don't know? And a lot of this stuff is not written down anywhere. Um, you're not going to find it. Well, you will be able to find it uh, in the president's Bible. Uh, and I mean, we're just, just really a couple of weeks, I think, hopefully, away from releasing this book. Uh, but... There are places to go about getting knowledge. So I want to talk a little bit tonight, 15, 20 minutes maybe, about uh, motorcycle club presidency knowledge and how you go about obtaining it. Um, somebody says, where can you buy the book? The book will be available on Amazon and Kindle. It'll be called The President's Bible by Black Dragon. Uh, all my books normally say by Black Dragon National President, but uh, it might be 
Black Dragon, former national president. I haven't decided how to do that yet. Uh, or John E. Bunch II. Or you'll be able to get it off my website uh, at uh, um, uh, blackdragonsgear.com. And, of course, there you can get the autographed copy and all that. So, um, so let's, let's first kind of start off with a definition of knowledge for the motorcycle club. A definition of knowledge, if you're talking about just knowledge itself, is understanding of a science or an art. But for the motorcycle club, and I've taken all this stuff and I've tried to arrange it for the motorcycle club. And I would say the definition is the range of one's information, including professional knowledge and understanding of biking. You know, motorcycling. The range of your knowledge, if you're going to be the president of a motorcycle club, the the range of one's information, including a professional knowledge, because if you're a motorcycle club president, you need to have a professional knowledge, thus that you can teach other folks and 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 talk to other folks and and things like that. You got to have a professional knowledge of biking, professional knowledge and understanding of biker culture, not only how to ride a motorcycle, but how do bikers exist in their society? What is biking culture? Then we got to break it down to one more level, which is motorcycle club culture. So you're a biker first. You are knowledgeable about biker culture second. And then third, you are um, uh, um, uh, knowledgeable about motorcycle clubs. And then you're going to be knowledgeable about MC protocol and biker set protocol and the complex social construct of biker club set hierarchy. Interesting, huh? And then your own internal club bylaws, club traditions, club ceremonies. Then you're going to have to be familiar with the local laws governing biking, biker clubs, biker club culture, and all these things I just mentioned. You're going to be an expert, someone who has a a professional range of knowledge in um, um, uh, biker set harmonics. Like what, what, what are the harmonics that exist on the set? Now, you also need a, a deep understanding of clubhouse management, logistics, supply, the movement of club brothers, places, people, as well as public relations management of all entities, internal or external to your MC nation. And I probably left out stuff like, um, hell, public relations and on and on. A motorcycle club president needs to know a hell of a lot to run a motorcycle club. And this is a lot of knowledge that one uh, is, is, is responsible to know. Like, holy moly, that, that's a hell of a lot y'all want me to know. And how do you get this knowledge? And let's dig a little bit deeper into the significance of having this knowledge. The gaining and retention of current developments in the motorcycle club world, we'll call that motorcycle club science, MC science, the study of. Science means the study of. So how do you get an in-depth knowledge and retention? You got to retain it. Of current developments in the motorcycle club world, MC science and biker world affairs is paramount for your growth, development, and qualifications for you to lead the club successfully as a motorcycle club president. And I say, face it, so many brothers want to be 
president. You want to be the P, but haven't done the basic work to acquire the knowledge necessary to successfully do the job. Yeah, I know. 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 All one has to do is put on the patch and hold the meetings. You know, how hard could that be? But if you haven't done the work to be the prez, you don't know what you don't know. You have no idea what you're talking about if you don't know what 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 it contains. If you haven't done any measurements, you can't do science without accurate collection of data. So many of you think that them old G's you see that was running motorcycle clubs didn't even have a high school education like you thought they were dumb. You thought they were stupid. And education doesn't have to come from a college to be valid. Some people talk about I'm streetwise. What they have is street knowledge. They went and got the street college. The gunshots, the bullet holes, the, 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 the life experiences that gave them the adequate knowledge necessary to run an MC. And you guys be like, how hard could it be? But if you haven't done the work to be prez, why in the hell do you want the job so much? And then I have to say, oh, yeah. Because that president patch is the biggest I love me patch there is. You know, I always talk about two patches, the patch on the front and the patch on the back. The patch on the front is the I love me patch. The patch on the back is the I love the MC patch. So that big old patch of accomplishment. And that's why you'll see a lot of outlaw clubs won't even wear that damn patch. You don't know who the sergeant at arms is. You don't know who the road captain is. You don't know who the president is when you see them. Because those patches mean nothing to them. Titles mean nothing to these folks. Titles don't mean anything to them. The only thing that means something to them is the job that they're required to do, and do they have enough intelligence, experience, and um, chutzpah to do the job? But for you guys, I almost forget. There's the women that this I Love Me patch brings. There's the prestige, the adulating, undulating following, the chest-puffing pomp and circumstance, attributed to being the P that makes this position so very desirable. So that's why so many of you punish your motorcycle clubs with your short-lived fantasies of grandeur, regressing your clubs five years behind once your failed mirror-posing legacy has come and passed. Because so often you get in the job and you don't even try to acquire enough knowledge. You don't even try to backfill. That's what we call it in the job world when you, you take a job in corporate America that you don't know how to do, but you're smart enough to speak the language to get the job. Some people do backfill. I've done it. Technical writer. I remember there was a job as a technical writer and you needed to know uh, Adobe Frame Maker. And Frame Maker was the way so many companies wrote technical manuals. Well, I didn't know Frame Maker, but uh, I know um, I know I knew Page Maker. I was using Page Maker since Aldous Page Maker. So uh, uh, I I told the job. Oh, I know Frame Maker. And they hired me. I mean, a crazy amount of money. It was, it was uh, 40, 50 bucks an hour, like I, 25 years ago, 20 years ago. And, but you had to know this frame maker. And I knew they were both similar, page maker and frame maker. How different could they be? Well, one was used to make magazines and newsletters, and another was used to put volumes of books together. Uh, and it had a, a database and it had an engine powerful enough to do that. But I didn't know jack about FrameMaker. 
So I got this job and I backfilled. I went to this place called photoshopvideos.com and they had all these videos you could buy, $40 a video, that taught you how to use everything from page maker, frame maker, all these things. But I, I knew that I needed, I, I knew I could learn it. I knew I could do the job. I knew I was a great writer. I was a technical writer. I just didn't know this damn frame maker thing. So I was able to backfill. And I, man, I, I spent double hours. Like I would work all day. And it just was really crazy because I'd go home and do lessons all night. And it was very crazy that every lesson I did kind of prompted me for what I ran into on the job the next day. I was like, oh, my God, I was so glad I studied all night because what I learned yesterday, I'm using today. Some of you guys won't even backfill, man. You get the job. And then you become a bump on an effing log. So why does Black Dragon get irritated? Because I detest incompetence. But most of your clubs get exactly what they deserve when they vote some of you guys as presidents in office. They get exactly what they deserve. I know this is sad to say, but most full patch brothers, and check this out. This is ugly, but you could say this about voters, period. Republican, Democrat, Independent. Most voters, I would say this about most voters, and it's ugly in a country where everybody has the right to vote, but I say most full patch brothers have no business voting anyway, even though they have the right as full patch brothers in good standing. They don't deserve to vote, just like most Americans don't deserve to vote. And that's why, why? That's because many of them aren't astute enough to vote on the club's issues. They don't research the club business of the day. They're, they're blind to what is even going on in the nation. They don't even question brothers running for offices to find out their agendas. Like, when was the last time somebody running for office, like president, did you as a club brother sit them down and say, well, what is your five-year goal for the club? What is your five-year agenda? Well, I'm only running for office. It's only going to be a year long. Yeah, but what is your... The, the things you put into play right now could be messing with us five years from now. So what is your five-year goal? Because certainly you're going to try to run again and perhaps again and again. When was you last time you sat down the road captain and asked him, well, what is your goal for the club? What is your agenda? Because that's not how you vote. And we talk about it all the time. Instead, oh, and another thing. You brothers don't even question brothers running for office to find out not only not their agendas, but their backgrounds or their experience. Not necessarily experience in the club. You might know that, you, that well, he's never been a president before. But what things have you done outside in the outside world that might might um, give you the, the knowledge and experience to do some of that in here? What, what do you know? What have you gleaned? What have you learned? What have you learned by watching other motorcycle clubs or members in this club, what have you learned that would lead you to do this job correctly? Instead, unwittingly, most of these brothers who don't deserve the right to vote anyway, these useless brothers, I call them, they use the voting ballot to wage a war against their own MC. <coughs> Turning voting into popularity contests. That's what your vote really turns out to be. Instead of elections designed towards vetting the best man qualified, best man most qualified to do the job, in the end, they get the person that they like, they want, they think, they feel comfortable with. The person they like. I think, I like, I want, I feel, I think, I like, I want, I feel. No scientific method, just I think I like this person. I want that guy. He's my best friend. I like him. I feel like he's going to be a good president. I'm comfortable with him. Often putting the club in a precarious position under an inept leader, an inept leader, incapable of even understanding the complexities of the job. But boy, do they feel great about it. We elected the guy we liked. And the overpuffed ego of the non-qualified president, 
who knows good and damn well that he is absolutely unqualified. It cannot be sated no matter how many bylaws he breaks in his first few weeks in office. You see him doing crazy things, putting people out of office, enacting new bylaws without the vote. But that's the guy you voted for. Because you didn't qualify him before you voted for him. And that's how we do. I think that the terms I think I like, I want, I feel should be forbidden in the MC. It should be forbidden ever to be used at church for any reason, because those are dangerous words. They are not good qualifiers for establishing the good order and discipline of the brotherhood. Yet they seem pervasive as they are at the forefront of every club, every club discussion in today's modern MCs. And even better yet, the club gets what it deserves from an inept president when they stand silent after he muscles his way in the office without a proper vote, using his henchmen to quiet those who would stand in opposition while the other brothers sit meekly silent, too terrified to make a protest and stand for what is right. You wouldn't think such a thing could happen among a society of alpha men, would you? But alas, even some of the strongest alphas become subservient little bitches once they choose to participate in an MC. They become as docile as sheep, not wanting to cause a scene or always be the one to dissent from the popular trend. So when the Brotherhood allows these things to occur, they get what they deserve. An unknowledgeable president, which could be you. Um, let's see here. Somebody's saying something to me. Uh, okay, you guys are talking to yourselves. Dinah Ryder, how you doing? Uh, so let's clarify this thing, this knowledge thing. Got off on a little tangent. Let's clarify this knowledge thing. Uh, let's talk about what knowledge isn't so that we can begin the discussion over the next few videos of what knowledge is and what you should do to acquire some MC knowledge if you should so desire. So in my opinion, I think, I think I can be a good president. It's not knowledge. In my opinion, hell, if he did it, I can do it. I can be a motorcycle club president. If he did it, that's not knowledge. In my opinion, I'm sure I can figure it out. Just elect me. That's not knowledge. I'm, and in my opinion, I'm the only one left to do the job. That's not knowledge. My father was the founder of the MC. It's my birthright to run it. That's not knowledge either. Now, even though many folks who have said these things have actually turned out to be competent leaders, the overwhelming majority by a thousand times more have not. Now, dictionary.com tells us six things about knowledge that a leader must know to pre prepare himself to lead the motorcycle club. Dictionary.com says knowledge is one, an acquaintance with facts, truths, or principles as from study or investigation. General uh, erudition, and erudition is knowledge gained by research and study. So dictionary.com that says that you got to have an acquaintance. You got to be familiar with some things that a lot of you guys are not familiar with. You got to be familiar with something called facts. You got to have a familiarity with facts, truths. And principles. Some of you guys like are so afraid of facts, truths, and principles, but that's what knowledge is. Knowledge is facts, truths, and principles. And the only way you get this acquaintance is through investigation and study. Study. Interesting, because study requires work, and work's not good for. Um, lazy people. It's work is never good for pompous people, 
it's not good for arrogant people. They, they, they often don't work. So the first thing we find out about knowledge is that it is fact-based. It contains truths or principles, and it must be gleaned, gleaned, attained by study, investigation, erudition, and experience. Just thinking you can be the best president because you didn't like the last guy and you worked in every way you could behind his back to get him removed doesn't give you knowledge to do the job. Two, dictionary.com says knowledge is familiarity or conversance as with a particular subject or brand of learning. Man, conversance. Interesting. So we learned in step two from dictionary.com that when you have knowledge of something, you have a familiarity with it such that you can be conversant. Blah, 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 blah. You can speak on it, bro. When somebody asks you a question in the meeting, you're not silent. You, you, you don't divert. You don't get pissed off and want to fight somebody in the meeting. You don't get mad. You don't punish. You don't over-talk people and yell at them, and you don't punish them because they asked you a question. You're not intimidated by it because you didn't know the answer. You're conversant. You guys aren't even conversant in your own bylaws. You want to be a president, but you don't even know your own bylaws. You can't even converse on the, 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 the what did the bylaws say? What are you questioning me? I'm the president. Blah, 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 blah. Instead of what the bylaws say in First Ten Timothy one, chapter seven, Uvitic, Leviticus, Deuteronomy two. That blah blah blah. You can't do that because you don't know. You don't have knowledge. When you have knowledge, you are familiar. You have a familiarity with it, such that you can be conversant. You can talk about it on the subject to lead others and discuss the pros and cons of which course of action to take. You can intelligently. Um, you can intelligently, did I lose my place here? Because this stupid dog is trying to get this ball here, man. Here, here, just go. You were supposed to not catch it in midair. I wasn't trying to do that. Um, uh, so you can discuss the pros and cons of which course of action to take. You can intelligently engage the brothers at church and argue convincingly convincingly for them to vote on the right way to do things because you are knowledgeable about it, the subject at hand. I can't tell you how many incompetent presidents I've seen over the years attempt to put new chapters of their clubs in areas they had no business trying to enter. Neither knowing the politics of the area, the protocol necessary to accomplish such an action, nor the caliber of men they had who uh, would not be able to pro uh, would not be able to stand up to the grilling they took from the area one percenters where they were trying to start those chapters. Often they end up calling me on my consultation line, you know, clarity.fm forward slash black hyphen dragon. And they pay those chat fees asking me to help them out of the jam. And I don't mind, but this is something that they should have had knowledge enough not to get into as you know, that trouble in the first place. Not this press. Should have known better. Yet, he didn't have the knowledge. And don't get it twisted. I've seen this in 1% of clubs too. And competence is not limited to the level of hierarchy your club occupies on the political spectrum. That, 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 that doesn't, that doesn't, you know, it's not, that doesn't limit, it, limit your, your knowledge. I will say I have had some presidents also that would call me before they get in trouble. Those are presidents that are trying to gain knowledge. And and, and uh, that would be the better way to go about it. It's it's better to ask. Uh, it's better to 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 ask before you get into trouble. That way you might not ever get there. 
So three, dictionary.com explains knowledge as an acquaintance or familiarity. And we keep getting this word familiarity. Gained by sight, experience, or report. I think about the allegory of the cave. Uh, the allegory of the cave is what a lot of people learn in uh, 101. You know, it's like your first year in college. You're talking about Rene Descartes and these folks who, who the allegory of the cave is kind of like you could you could imagine like if you lived in 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 here and you'd never been out of here. <laughs> And your walls were black and your ceilings were black and you lived in a cave and somebody walked inside that cave and told you about the sky. And, and, and for you, it's those black rocks in the overhead. You, there's not even any light up there. You've never seen a blue sky, sunlit sky. No knowledge of that. It would be hard for you to even know what the hell. You couldn't even form any basis by which to have a reality because you just can't know what you don't know. You can't see what you've never seen. And this says acquaintance or familiarity gained by sight. That's a very interesting thing because if you were to see a sky, then your knowledge is prima facie. Boom. I see a sky. Therefore I know it is it's there i just saw that sky so sight or by experience you've experienced that sky or maybe somebody could write a story about a sky so convincing that that report could educate you with knowledge of what a sky was even though you'd never seen one so knowledge can be acquired through the acquaintance or familiarity gained by sight. And I write, you can gain knowledge by having spent time around those responsible for getting things done. The familiarity gained by sight, seeing things happen a thousand times before, can give you the experience needed to build a knowledge base from which to run a club. And the fourth thing that dictionary.com talks about knowledge or practical wisdom gained from what one has observed, encountered, or undergone. You know, you can look at that as experience as his best teacher. Being in this club world for as long enough time that you know what is happening because you just feel it in your bones. You've seen it enough, the experience. You can build your knowledge level and skill necessary to to, to, to be pres. There is, this has nothing to do with ego. I think I like, I want, I feel, nor some sort of notion that things will come to you when the time is right. This is about knowing because you know it is in your bones. It's deep within your psyche to be a successful president. You must be an expert in the field of MC presidency. That's the bottom line. Blindly blustering your way along like a blithering idiot, concerned with protecting your pride, puts your men in danger and your MC nation at peril. I talk about an article, How to Become an Expert in Your Chosen Field, which you will find at www.eatyourcareer.com forward slash 2015, forward slash 05, forward slash how hyphen to hyphen become hyphen and hyphen expert hyphen in hyphen your hyphen chosen hyphen field. This was written May 4th, 2015. An author by the name of Chrissy Shiv Shivaku. She said, I'm going to make a bold statement. In the field of professional development, which was her field, I consider myself an expert. It's not just because I've been writing my blog for over five years. Any Joe Schmo off the street can do this. Rather, it's because I've immersed myself in the field, soaked up the knowledge, and applied it at a rapid pace. And these days, I really feel it's paying off with a level of expertise few others possess. 
You might be wondering what this actually means, so let me tell you. It means I feel an elevated level of respect when I speak. My, my ideas are listened to and considered thoughtfully. I'm sought out by others to weigh in on topics of debate. And I have an entire library of work I can reference. In short, I feel knowledgeable and empowered. You ever have a president you won't go to and talk to about a damn thing because they are retarded and they don't know anything? Have you ever wondered about that? Have you ever said, gee, gee this guy, I don't want to be that president. When you want to talk to me about MC stuff, I want to be well studied and well prepared. I think if all MC presidents could laud their preparation so completely, what a biker club set we would have out there throughout the world. She listed her preparations she undertook to prepare herself before she called herself an expert at her chosen field of development. She was well written on the subject. She had a blog about professional development that she had been writing for years. She immersed herself. She immersed herself. She immersed herself in her field, soaking up all of the knowledge she could. Then she practiced applying the knowledge at a rapid pace as she developed it. So as I close tonight, and, and uh, we're going to cover some more of this, but this is the beginning of my chapter in the President's Bible, my new book coming out. Uh, in just a, a few short weeks now, uh, we have written all of the major work in this book, and now we're in editing and uh, formatting. That's where we are now. So I got finished with this earlier today, and I'm really, really proud of it. So uh, you guys get to see the, the first bit of it. And, and what I wanted to talk to you about uh, was this idea of knowledge, especially some things that uh, I, I've seen here in the last several days, which have been some presidents that I've uh, had to engage with that didn't have a whole lot of knowledge about what the hell they were doing. And they make the block hot. They make the block hot for them and their clubs. So I wanted to try to give you some pieces as we move forward about the acquisition of knowledge. And we're going to talk about it more in depth as we do some more Bible studies. But the idea first, we wanted to explain what the hell knowledge is. And that the fact that there's a familiarity and that knowledge is only gained through work. And if there is not the people that you want in your clubhouse that have the knowledge that you need, then get outside of your club. Find, if you're a 99 percenter, find that one percenter that blessed y'all. Find a sergeant in arms in there or someone that has knowledge that you can just sit around and soak up. Listen to the OGs. Don't be so quick to retire them and stick them off in a corner because you know it all. Until you have had the time, the experience, till you can be conversant. And we talked about a lot of things that you, you really need to know. Local laws and biking and biking. I mean, when you're a president, somebody picks up the phone and says, hey, what do I need to do to make a long distance ride across country? You've never ridden across country. And you start hemming and hawing. Some of you don't even know how to go get the information. That shell. Well, you know, I don't know. I've never ridden my motorcycle cross country, but you know what? There's about a hundred YouTube videos on it. And I'm going to look at a few of them. Not, hey, man, go check out YouTube. You're a teacher. You're a professor. I'm going to go educate myself, and then we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about it. And then, you know what? Oh, we don't have any long-distance riders in our club, but, man, those that club over there around the corner, man, them cycle kings, they ride cross country all the time. So we we'll see if we can't get that road captain to sit down and talk with us and, and give us some. You have to be able to dig this stuff up. Your people need you. They, uh, they want to hear from you. They want to know what you're talking about. And so um, 
that's what it takes, man. It takes this um, uh, hard work at gaining the information um, and the data set known as knowledge and experience. So I, I got, you know, a few more things that, you know, I got a lot I can talk to you about in this chapter. I didn't even write the whole, I didn't even print the whole chapter. There's so much to explain to you about knowledge and how to get it and how to move with it and, uh, and uh, all the different kinds of ways to get it. Oh man, we talked about a lot. The president's Bible, I expect to be, and you know, so many people are so mad. You're going to tell everything, all the secrets of, no, the president's Bible, we talk about the scientific applied practical methods of gaining the experience, the insight, the knowledge and other things necessary to run a group of men in this case, motorcycle club, but this book could be applied to anything in anybody. And, uh, I hope you guys, uh, find it, um, usable. I hope that you guys, uh, are going to find it uh, 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 worth your time. And and that's what we're going to hope for. So anyway, um, that is um, what I have to say about that. I want to wish you guys all a happy Father's Day. Um, I'm just checking real quick to see uh, uh, what questions I may have. I'm my my real uh my my real camera's up there so i really can't see what you guys are saying to me if anything i have to check out um uh what you guys would be saying on the video so let's see uh do i have any questions Uh, thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. I bet the pres needs to know how to be heard, how to herd cats. Uh, yeah, that's part of it. <laughs> uh, Paul Fry said he's taking so much from this tonight. I appreciate you, man. Uh, let's see. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, oh, happy Father's Day. I got, are you watching me? Uh, Tia, you're supposed to be driving in a damn car and not watching me. So anyway, uh, okay, that's good. So I think that's the, uh, questions that we have tonight. Some clubs, 10 riding, 10 miles, 20 of them are riding another 10 miles. Is this a question? Man, this is so small, I can't even hardly read it. Let's see. Okay, I don't think that's a question to me. All right, I think that's good. So listen, uh, I definitely appreciate you. We have uh, a whole brand new show that's going to be coming on Monday through Friday in the mornings again. I've just spent the last few weeks working on it, so you guys be sure to check that out. We have the Discord server. Please join the Black uh, Dragon Discord server. Uh, Black Dragon Biker TV, you will find the uh, uh, information for the Discord server in the uh, um, comment section below. So we would love it if you would actually join our Discord server. Um, we also have uh, uh, the Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos, which is our online news magazine. And uh, you can um, uh, check us out there. Uh, and, and uh, our new stories that we print. Uh, also, we have uh, the podcast, The Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos. And um, that podcast is, uh, we, we normally, uh, every time you see a video of mine here, you can also find the podcast um, that uh, you'll see on TV. You're inside the Dragon's Lair here. This is where we have um, our um Bike night, you can come to the Dragon's Lair bike night, hang out with me. Uh, bike nights are Sunday nights. Uh, we didn't do this one this Sunday, of course. It's Father's Day. But uh, bike nights here in Georgia, Sunday nights. If you want to uh, know the address or something like that, send me an email to blackdragon at blacksabbathmc.com. And uh, I will make sure that you have the address and 
uh, I'll make sure to be putting that out uh, next week as I do my uh, videos so that next Sunday, hopefully, we'll see you guys here at the Dragon's Lair, uh, the clubhouse for uh, uh, for the Black Sabbath here and Black Dragon Biker TV uh, here at the Dragon's Lair. We have nothing but a blast, lots of fun, and I uh, want you to come here and hang out with us, um, sign your books or whatever the case may be. Um, so... Those are the things that we want you to know. I met an incredible artist this weekend, and uh, his name is Chains. And uh, he he um, uh, uh, he he gave me a beautiful beautiful. Uh, the president gave me a beautiful uh, knife uh, that he has carried on his person for quite some time. He gave me that as a, a thanks for uh, my contribution to the MC world. And um, uh, uh, he rides uh, with uh, uh, um, nut baskets, MC, I believe that's it. And uh, this, this gentleman is, um, I've asked him if maybe he could, he's a crazy artist, man. And I've asked him if perhaps he could um, put together a, um, uh, 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 a uh, um, uh, cover for the uh, president's Bible. And he says that he would. So uh, the cover, if it, <laughs> if it looks anything like the drawings this man does, I am going to, uh, uh, you guys are going to really enjoy that cover. So I'm, I'm hoping for big things with that. So, man, we just got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff happening. So glad you guys could tune in. Um, so uh, I'm, let's see, how many minutes has this been? It's probably been more than the 20 minutes that I had said. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. I've said all the things I need to say. Oh, my God, 47 minutes. Uh, yeah, we don't, <laughs> we don't like to do them that long anymore. But anyway, thank you guys for being with me all this time. Thank you for all the years. Thank you for 54,000 subscribers. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, over 100,000 subscribers on all of my platforms. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm on uh, Facebook. Facebook has still got me in some kind of a jail such that uh, only you people that really know I'm there can find me. And I don't know how long it's going to go on. It's been four months. So hopefully uh, they release me at the six-month point. Six month point. So if you're trying to find Black Dragon Biker TV on Facebook, what you have to do is you actually have to type in Black Dragon Biker TV and find a post I made. Click on that post and then click back to Black Dragon Biker TV. That's the only way you're going to find me. I'm not able to connect my friends or anything like that. And this is because I broke several of their rules, uh, not really uh, on purpose, but I did break them. So uh, I'm uh, they had me where the channel was demonetized for, for three months. So they allowed the monetization back on, but they still won't let me, uh, they've, they've classified me as a trash channel and they won't let me uh, invite people. And it's, they say you can still find me, but it's very difficult. And until I, uh, uh, until they lift up their moratorium against me, uh, but at least they didn't take me off. Like, like uh, they have several other people, including the former president of the United States. At least they haven't, <laughs> like completely taking me off. So uh, if you're going to play on their platform, you got to play by their rules so that we definitely understand. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I see you, big man, Chris. I see you, Julio Chingaling. I see you, Dinah Ryder. And I hope, uh, 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 you know, you guys and, and, and Mrs. Dinah Ryder, I hope you guys are doing well. I haven't talked to you guys in a while. I love you guys. I see you, Jason Markey, my club brother. Uh, man, I see all you folks out there with me tonight. I just want to thank you again. That's my two cents. Thank you for coming here to the Dragon's Lair and hanging out with me. Um, I'm Black Dragon. Uh, oh, my God, I've lost 15 pounds. You can tell uh, when your watch be hanging off you. Um, uh, my wa Well, my watch was hanging off. Did I gain the weight back? Oh, my God. My watch is uh, hanging off my arm. Uh, and you can see air uh, right there. Look at that. See that air? Can you see that air right there? That air. 
please see the light, see the air, see that wind in there. My, when your watch is hanging off your arm, because uh, it used to be I was so fat when I would do this, my watch would actually come undone. So when I can look up and see some light between my arm and the watch, the weight loss is happening. I'm actually getting skinny. I've done more than just talked about it. I've made it occur. I'm making it occur. So we're getting rid of the fat gut. I'm going to be beautiful at 60, bro. I'm going to be I'm going to be better looking than most of y'all. So anyway, that's my two cents. Uh, my dogs all say hi. I'm Black Dragon. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny. <laughs>